Hi there. Welcome to Transforming the World. My name is Pastor Greg. You know, when I was pastoring a small church in Iowa, I met a man by the name of John Mason. And uh, when I met him at the time, he was chair of the deacons and in that little church, Fairview Church of the Brethren. We were discussing the poor attendance at an event called Love Feast. Um, if you don't know what that is, Love Feast is a um, reenactment of the Last Supper, if you will in that upper room where Jesus met with the uh, apostles. Um, in my denomination, Church of the Brethren, uh, we, we sort of reenact that event. We have a meal together. Um, we do, we wash one another's feet. And then we do communion with the bread and cup. I had offered a suggestion as the deacons were meeting, they were talking about the lack of interest in this thing called Love Feast. And uh, I made a suggestion how we might change a few things and uh, perhaps that might help in, improve enthusiasm or excitement for those to participate. And John's response really caught me off guard. I appreciated it though. He said, we won't know if it will help if we don't try. I loved John's optimism. I really did. Question number six asks this, do pessimistic people irritate me? Yes, yes, they do. I get very irritated about pessimistic people. Not sure why, you know. I'm not sure why I get irritated by um, these people who seem to suck all the joy out of life. They grumble when it's wet. They grumble when it's dry. They grumble when it's hot. They grumble when it's cold. They don't like snow. They don't like this. And they don't like that. And on and on and on they go. Just grumbling about life. It's like, seriously? Is there anything in your life that brings you joy? <laughs> Nothing works. Everything's broken. Why bother trying? <laughs> you ever meet somebody like that? It's like, it's like pessimism and negativity are their spiritual gifts, except there are no such spiritual gifts. I'm kind of curious. Have, have you ever wondered this? Where does the spirit of negativity come from? Have you ever wondered that? Why are so, why are so many people so negative? And I, I'm, not, I'm not talking about unbelievers. I'm not talking about non-Christians here. I'm talking about believers. I'm talking about believers who are very negative and pessimistic. Well, that'll never work. We tried that before and it failed. Those kind of individuals. They just suck all the enthusiasm and joy out of a room. Well, actually, it is the nature of sinful humans to live for ourselves and to complain when our desires are not being met. You don't, don't believe me? Read Galatians 5, 19 and 20. See what the Apostle Paul has to say about negativity and pessimism. We tend to argue for our rights and demand our way. And usually we oppose anybody who disagrees with us. Just go on social media, that's for sure. Wow. Well, that combination results in a general spirit of negativity toward the world and toward life in general. And, and, and like I said, it's understandable that those who don't know Christ might be negative. I mean, as I said earlier on, they have no hope in anything beyond this world at all. They have nothing tangible to hold on to in their life that gives them hope. But negativity, ne you know, negativity in a Christian's attitude basically means that he is refusing to see life from God's perspective. And, and when we join that with hostility and pride and complaining, in all honesty, uh, the believer who has that kind of pessimistic, negative, defeated attitude, they're responding to the world just as a non-believer. Where is your faith? Where is your hope? Where is your confidence in, in, in who God is and what God has promised? Now, the truth is, an authentic Christian can counter all of this doom and gloom mentality 
with a very gentle, loving, faith-filled approach to life. 1 John 5, 14, perfect example of that. We can refuse to get caught up in all the hopelessness and the me first mentality that's normal in the world. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, good example of that. We can offer light in the darkness, says Christ, Matthew 5, 14. We can offer truth in the middle of Satan's deception, John 17, 17. And we can provide hope in the face of despair, um, Psalm 43, 5. I think it's important for us to remember that Yes, we are in a world filled with negativity, hopelessness, darkness, uh, pessimism, because the people of this world have nothing tangible to hold on to, to give them that hope. Which is why I believe Christ said what he said in Matthew 5.14. He called his disciples the light of the world because in dark and troubling times, the world needs some, something to cling to, someone to cling to. And they need Christians who are optimistic and filled with hope. And that hope that you have as a Christian in the midst of trying and dark times, that hope that you have brings hope to those still living in darkness. Your optimistic outlook on life might be the only hope that some people ever see. So a couple thoughts this week on optimism. Uh, I hope you found them encouraging. I hope, uh, I hope it um, helped you understand why optimism is so necessary in the life of a Christian. I hope, I hope, uh, you know, I hope you understood all of that. So next week, we're going to examine the characteristic of obedience on transforming the world. I will see you then. My name is Pastor Greg. Have a great weekend.